All right, so let's start our <clears throat> next chapter, which is exploring and validating data. So in this, we'll be learning four topics, which is exploring data, filtering rows, formatting columns, sorting data, and removing duplicates. Now, during the process of our SAS programming, as you people are aware, that there are five processing steps which we are going to learn. Which is first one was accessing data. <clears throat> Then you are going to see how one can explore and validate your data. Then you'll be preparing your data for analysis. Then you will be generating the reports and you'll be exporting the data or reports. So these are the five steps. So among this, this is the next step, which is exploring and validating the data. Okay. So let's understand the very first topic, which is how one can explore your data. So see, during our process, of our learning SAS programming or irrespective of SAS programming as a data analyst when we will be using any of the technologies okay most of these steps you are going to do the same steps which are first thing is you need to access data explore data prepare data analyze and generate a report and of course once the report is generated or the data is created as per the required uh, business requirement, you are going to export the results to your end users. Uh, it could be managers, higher managers, uh, middle management people who are actually taking decisions for the organization depending on the reports which we submit. Correct? So, the reports could be either into any format. So, that is why it's telling you're exporting. So, these steps which we are going to learn of programming. One of them we have already completed in our previous lesson, which is accessing data. We have seen how one can access data, which is existing SAS files with the labeling statement. Non-existing SAS files like Excel, we have seen you can connect to Excel workbook again by a labeling. And also we have seen a process of prop input. Then once your data is into SAS environment, you are going to explore your data. Okay, so exploring data is you will be writing certain procedures to generate reports to understand your data. Okay, either you can filter your data. Filter means, for example, if you have some data of some uh, clinical trial or it could be any data where you have information of some, suppose certain patients, it's a demographic information where uh, for clinical trials they need to screen the uh, participants who are going to participate in these trials, and the requirement is they should be uh, about maybe or between the age group of 18 and 25. And uh, in case they are about 25, we don't have to select those data, uh, people. So, what are we going to do <clears throat> from overall the data of 100 of people which we have? We are going to write certain statements where we are going to select only those people who are between the age of 18 to 25. So what are we doing? Out of 100, we are selecting between 18 to 25. That is, we are filtering the data which is required only for a business activity. Hence, it's the statement where you are filtering. So this is what it is. It's showing you the icon that you have a table and you're going to filter only what is required for your analysis. Then we are going to see how one can apply certain formats to uh, make your data uh, visible or in a readable format. Okay, and you can see how one can rearrange the data values in a specific order. So in case you want the data to be uh, ordered in the ascending order of their age, then this is how it is, or descending order of their age. So you can see one can always perform these tasks of rearranging the rows, which is sorting your data. So this is how we are going to explore your data. <clears throat> okay. So this topic emphasized mostly on exploring data by using certain predefined SAS procedures. So as a data analyst, if you want to look into your data, it's not feasible that one can always open the table in the view pane of any of the software. View pane means it's just open as table, okay? 
so we cannot always do that because you know data are never with few rows few rows i mean either 5000 6000 8000 rows right data could be with huge rows either millions of rows and thousands of columns so most of the time you people in live scenario you are going to connect to data files which are in databases so you cannot always import the huge tables with millions of rows and thousands of columns into sas to open it it will take a long time to process your system and it will affect the efficiency of processing and slow the work the server and it will also affect the other users along the servers who are using your system so that is not feasible so we learn in sql how one can connect to various data files so that is how sql plays role that you can always query the tables of huge data files at database level and take in the information okay so that is a different thing but here in sas once you have read data which is a small data file with um, 8000 10000 rows 20000 50000 rows during a class session okay we are going to see how one can explore explore means we are going to observe the data we are going to find the data we are going to learn the information of your data or we are going to understand your data why it's important because as a data analyst once you are working on any business requirement or a scenario or a, a business um query uh to be solved on a specific table as a data analyst it's really important or it's pre required that you should understand your input data okay so that's what we are going to explore so there are certain pre defined procedures like print means univariate frequency so these are some of the procedures which we will be using to explore your data all right so let's work with one of it which is called procedure print so moving here and into my studio so see i have an pre existing code with libname which i'm connecting to all the data files which are saved into this path within this data folder so i'm connecting to so what i'm doing currently i am actually connecting to the data sets which are stored in this path in sas so that it is referred with the library reference called g1 correct so where do i see this library so in library start when i look here i find it's a g1 library and these are already existing data sets which are in this path okay so these are sas data sets okay therefore we are not giving the default engine name while connecting to this path called base correct so the path is with us where we have all your data so here we'll be having all our sas files now for example within this pg1 library we want to explore this table which is class both table so what we can do is i'm not saving any of the predefined codes okay let's open a program a blank program window and i write proc print so proc print means it's a procedure we know a short form of pro a procedure we term it as proc print is never like go and connect to the printer that we are giving instructions to sas to connect the printer to print no here the word print is just list out the contents or the data information of your data portion of your data set okay so that means it will give you the list of all the columns and all the rest uh, uh, rows from your data so we are going to give the instruction proc print data equal to on which data set you are going to apply this procedure print so you are going to use it from your pg1 library we are working with see it's giving you a drop drop down of all the data sets so this is where you see a data set and you stop your procedure with run 
So what is happening here? Ideally, it will with print it will read this input data, which is saved in PG One library, and it will list all the columns and all the rows in your result window. This is the result window, which is active only when you generate any type of result with any of the SAS proc or procedures. So when I submit this, see in my result tab, I'm getting the output. You see this output? This output has so many columns and 19 rows. So when you are actually going to look into your data, now see, when you are going to explore your data, I'm double clicking this from my PG window or PG library. So when I double click this, it is opening into a view report or sorry, view tab or a view pane of your SAS studio, which is a SAS table, which is shown you. So here itself at the top, it's describing the table contains 19 columns, six rows. This is the columns. And when you click any of this column at the bottom, it gives you the properties of column. It's telling you that this is the name of the column, the label of the column, length of the column. All right. Then it's also telling you about the type of the column. So this is the descriptor portion of that columns. All right. So this is all how you are going to look into your data. But it's not always feasible that you can directly open the table in this new form. All right. So hence, it's always feasible to write certain procedures. So we've written this proc print procedure. Now, if you move ahead and if you look into your another data file, suppose now this data had only 19 rows, so it was a small table. But what if I just open this LP species? Now see, when I double click this from my library, it is opening into your view pane. So this type of presentation in uh, on the screen, it appears in a specific area of the software, which is called view pane. Okay. So see, it's telling how many rows, 11,000 rows, or you can say 1,19,000 rows, 259 rows. Okay. With total columns as 11. So there are so many rows. Okay. When you are want to process this prop print, it may take a long time to proc or to print your data. So what you can do is always select only specific rows to understand your data. So I'm selecting this NP species, correct? Stop my step. So see your proc print is ending with, or your proc print statement is ending with this semicolon. And run is a statement which is ending your procedure. So I do not want all 1,19,000 rows to be displayed. So I can always write certain options within your proc print that I want to select only suppose 20 rows to be seen into my output. So when I give these instructions, it's actually I'm telling SAS that it should list all the rows and all the columns from this data set. And it should stop when the observation number 20 occurs. So it is OBS equal to 20. It does not mean observation is 20. It's like stop your printing or stop the listing of your data when it occurs observation number 20. So that is the end point where SAS will stop processing your data to be listed into your output window. So see, it is showing you all the columns and all the rows when it occurs when observation is 20. So this is the presentation in HTML form in your result pane when you submit a procedure. And when you check your log, see it's telling it has read only 20 observations from your pg onemp species and it's telling procedure print based. All right, so this is how prop print works. So see, it's telling by default, proc print lists all columns and rows from your input data. So if you write this option in front of data set in your proc print in parentheses, the brackets in your programming language is termed as parentheses, okay? 
So in parenthesis, I'm using OBS equal to N. So that N can be any number where you want SAS to stop processing your data. Okay, so this is used to specify the last observation or row to be read. As I said, it is the end point where you are asking SAS to stop reading the rows. So this was your one of the procedures called problem. So to move ahead, they have asked you a certain question which you need to work out by connecting to this link which is support.sas.com oblique document. So as you know, this document is the online support forum of SAS where they have given you all the information about all the SAS programming techniques, data step, doc steps, and the syntax information. Okay, so they have asked you to go to this support.sas.com documentation, click 9.4 after SAS procedures. And uh, in this, you can always find out by name and product. So they are asking you to find in Procprint examine the syntax and the table of procedure tasks and information about the examples. So let's connect to your documentation. So what you can do is come to Google. In your search pane, type support.sas.com forward slash give that within this support.com you need to connect to documentation or documents, documents, sorry. Documentation, document. If you cannot do that, I just write it here. Support.sas.com. Come to this website. See, it comes like this. Just pay attention. I'll, I'll give you, I'll share the link. So it's telling all about support from SAS. So see, you click here documentation. It will connect to documentation. So this is your path. So see to it that you bookmark this path because in upcoming trainings, you will be using this documentation files. Okay. So within this, see when you scroll down, you have this various popular documents available. You can click SAS programming, which is SAS 9.4 and we are to let's click this SAS programming. Second option from here.
All right, see, it's coming like this. I hope everyone might have got connected to the documentation. So either you can scroll at the left hand side pane. These are various topics of programming. Okay, so either if you want to read the procedures, you can click this base as procedures. If you want to read anything about data step programming, you can read from this data step program. So base SAS procedure, I'll just click here. We'll see procedure guides. So let's see base procedure guides. So within this, guides, so, no, procedures. So within procedures, there are various procedures. See, if you want to read something about contents, so there is contents also. So when you click here, you will find the overview of contents, that what is contents, why it is used. Okay, then it will give you syntax of contents. Fine. So like this, we are going to work with our procedure print. So it's alphabetically all the procedures been saved. So see, you have prop print or procedure print. So just click this print procedure and you will see on the right hand side, there is a description. So the question here is, browse your documentation, click SAS procedures and find print, examine the syntax and the table of procedure tasks and examples. So this is what it's telling. So once you find this example, so it's telling which statement in the prop print selects variables that appear in the report and determines the order. So this is the description syntax so within syntax see there are various statements so they have described the statements so the question here is when you are browsing which statement in prop print selects variables that appear in the report and determines their order so which is the statement so looking in your screen or you can also use my screen to do it see some of the statements used in prop print which statement is used to select the variables and the, where. the order yes where where absolutely so they have given your select variables that appear in the report which determines their order so what does this mean that means now by default when we are listing or when we are using prop print on your data pg1 dot empty species you know it's default selecting all the rows which are nearly 11 rows in your table but we do not want all the 11 rows from your table if you want to understand only the tables which is suppose species id scientific name okay now this table is for national park species data and you want to know its common names so what you can do is you can select those columns for your report generation or understanding to use a statement called var you are going to write the columns so we want species underscore id we want their scientific name so is the spelling Scientific name. I spell mistake, so let's select it. Scientific Common names or. Okay, so let's see if I give this with this spell how it's working. See, so it's giving me an error. Now, what error it's telling me? So, when it's reading this statement, okay, which statement? Bar statement. 
Now, make a note as a data analyst, you should understand how SAS processes the statements. So, when you are writing a program, SAS will read your statements of your program from left to right and from top to bottom. So, it finished reading top print. So, when it came to your wire statement, when it was reading this word, it found that the variable scientific names are not found in your data. Hence, it cannot move ahead. So, it's a syntax error. Hence, it's telling your SAS system stop processing because of error and procedure print was used. So, what is the problem in your program? The spell check for species name. So, this is scientific name as a column and not names. Hence, correct your spelling for your column name and resubmit your print procedure. So when you resubmit this print procedure, what SAS will do is it will list only this three columns with the same order, which is first order will be displayed in your output as species ID. Then the second order is scientific name, which you have specified, and then it will come your common name. All right. So in the same order, it will generate the output. only three columns by default you know see by default in your report you see the column called OBS it shows you the number of rows and these are the three columns in the same order which you have written in your var statement you are selecting these columns so why what are we doing is in case if you are looking ahead to work only on these columns no need of selecting by default all 11 columns Hence, just select these columns, observe the data. So it's telling that this all columns has values which are characters. So there are certain names in common names, which is lengthy words like statements. Okay, so see how the values are. See some of the values. Look at here also, the species name is the family name and the species name. So again, here you have two words within some of the values and the IDs are saved with some code along with some number separated by hyphen. So this is how you are going to understand your data. Why? Because later on, in case, if you want to filter your data, okay, so in case I want to generate the report only on an ID, ACAD-1006, how I'm going to select only those rows. So that is filtering, which I do it with a where statement. We'll see it in upcoming topics, okay? So I'm going to write my column name for which I'm going to filter my data. And I'm going to write is equal to the ID value. Now, because the values are character, we put in quotes. Why quotes? That also we'll see. It. So it's A, what is the value? A, C, A. This if it does. Okay, so now see. Now look at the report now. What is happening to the number of rows in the report? You see, it got selected only for my single value. Why? Because maybe in my data. I have the value for species ID appearing only once. Hence, it is selecting only this species ID value with respect to all its values with its columns of species name and column names, common names. So this is how I have filtered my data with only specific requirement to be seen into my result. So when I check my log window on my same species or if I Submit this profit. Understand your log. So see, it's telling there was one observation read from your data, pg one dot entry species, where statement was read, where it is filtering or selecting the rows only on this subsetting criteria. Why I'm using the word subset? Because from the huge table. I'm selecting only few rows 
which are the part of my original table, hence it is a subset. Correct? So it's subsetting the data on this condition. So remember, we are reading only 20 rows. So in the 20 rows, it is finding this value, which is only single value. But in case I remove this, I just come out to this side so that later on it will be useful for us. All right. And now let's see. So, same thing out of so many rows from 11 or 1 lakh 19,000, we still has it as a unique value. Hence, it is a single value for our criteria where it is selecting the values for your data of species ID is only one. Okay, so this is how you are exploring the data, your understanding data. So, with VAR statement, which is it's telling among this, what VAR statement is doing? Yes. It is selecting the variables. Yeah. So, which statement in proc print selects variables that appear in the report and determine the order? It's VAR. So, this is what it's showing you the screenshot also for your documentation from your SAS. So, this is what they had shown the screenshot. Same thing. Correct? Moving back. So this is how they are restricting the rows to be read only with 10 rows and they're selecting this column. So here they are using a library reference which is already existing permanent library for us, which is SAS help. You know, when you start a session, by default, SAS provides two libraries. One is your temporary, which is work, and one is the permanent new as SAS help, which is already having some predefined tables. So as per this instructions, make model type MSRP, these are the columns which they are selecting for your report present day. So they appear in the same order and only those columns appear in your report, right? So this was one of the procedure called doctor. Now we can also see on the screen, you have another procedure called as prop notes. So what is this means, okay? So before working on this means, you people just type this code, try this, or you can also work out with our current profit. Go ahead and work on this profit. Type this code. This meeting is being... Let's... So this was all about your proc rate. So there is another procedure called as proc means. The word means in statistics means it will be calculating the means of your numeric data. All right. So the syntax is proc means data is equal to input table or the table which you want to analyze in this procedure. Where here also plays the same role as profit, where you can select a column or columns. Fine. So by default, prop means generate simple summary statistics for numeric columns. So moving back here, I write prop means. Okay. So let's work on a very simple data pg1 dot this class test. Okay, test to your test. Run. So before working on this data, so let's understand what PG1 class test is. So we have data set class test two. Okay, so just open this table, and it's telling we have three columns: name, subject, test score. So. These two columns are character. Why we call them character? Because they have the values which are character. Whereas test score is the column which is numeric. Why numeric? Because the values are numeric. But 
how can we suggest or tell that it's really numeric so what you can do one thing is you can also explore the descriptor portion of your data by using prof context i hope you remember when we use prof context to see the descriptor portion right so i write pg1 dot class underscore test to table so when I explore this to understand the types of my column, I could see in this that this name, subject, or character, whereas test score is numeric. Correct? So moving back, I simply write proc means. So when I write this proc means, I do get a report only on an analysis variable called test score. Why? Because Procedure means works only on numeric columns where it calculates mean, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum. Means in statistics means we are calculating average. Mathematical in method, mathematically the term is average, but in scientific <coughs> language we term it as means. All right. So by default, these are some of the default statistics which it shows which is mean standard deviation minimum value and maximum value in test score so minimum value is 55 maximum value is 99 and this is the mean test score of the data all fine so this is how by default prop means score so moving ahead so it's telling you the same thing it creates a summary statistics for each numeric column in the input data so this is they are working with SAS help cards. So let's work on this. So when I use this proc means I equal to SAS help, which is my predefined permanent library, and within it I have cars table. So cars is a table which is actually describing the types of cars, models of cars where it's been origin or been manufactured, okay, what are the car's prices. So these are some of the num columns which are describing your table. So see, make, model, your car types, okay, car types, origin, drive train. So these are some of the information about this car, MSRP, invoice, engine size, cylinders, horsepower, then mileage in city, mileage on highway, Okay, so this is something which is on the SCARS table. So moving into your program, so when I simply execute drop means on sasal.cars, so let there be 10 numeric columns or all the columns from the data be numeric. So you know drop means works only on numeric columns. So all these numeric columns are getting analyzed. See, all numeric columns, land, will base, weight, mileage on highway, city, horsepower, cylinders, engine size, invoice, and MSR. You get mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, which is a default statistics. It represents n encounters or n means there are number of rows in this data. Label means originally the column is saved with this name, but to appear on the report, it appears with this label. Okay, so what is label? We'll see it later on, but understand the statistics. All right, n means number of rows, non missing rows, total rows. So, originally, this SAS help table does contain 428 rows. All right, so when you check this data, so it's telling total rows is 428, total columns are 50. So your current slide is telling to select only this columns for analysis and you get only those columns with this var statement to be analyzed into your report. So in your program, we had used two tables. One was test and one was test two and one was SASL. So what in test two, it had only one numeric column. So by default, that numeric column was taken for analysis. Whereas in sasal.cars, there are nearly eight to nine columns, which are numeric. So it's giving you the results on all those columns. 
where it shows you this default statistics. So minimum means minimum value in this MSRP. Maximum means maximum value in the MRP. Standard deviation, mean, and total, which is non-missing values. All right. So this is something which we are exploring by using procedure means. So there is another procedure which is equivalent to means called as proc univariate. So this proc univariate also generates summary statistics for each numeric column in your input data. So let's see how univariate works. Okay, so I work with data. Suppose proc. Class test to itself, but instead of means, I use univariate. I write univariate. Now understand what how univariate works. I have univariate spell check. So I submit this proc univariate. So again, proc univariate works only on numeric column. See, proc univariate gives you the result which is statistical result as compared to prop means, but here it gives you a bit detailed statistical result only on numeric columns. So by default, it gives you one portion of this report called moments, where it gives number of non-missing values, mean, standard deviation, skewness, uncorrelated, coefficient of vari variance or uh, variation, and so on. Then the second basic statistics measures mean, median, mode. It also gives you the test for location, quantiles, okay, and it gives you extreme values from your column. Extreme values means how it gives minimum five lowest values and maximum five highest values. So it's telling minimum values in your data. There are five which is having the value as 55, which comes in the observation number 37 and so on. And maximum values, it's telling 99, which is the highest value. This is first, or it, it gives you maximum of five rows. You can also control this number of rows, okay? And it's telling this is coming in the uh, observation number six. So this is how univariate is similar like prop means Again, a summary statistical report, but it gives you detailed statistical values, including extreme values with lowest and highest values in your data for the analysis variable called as, or by default numeric variable in this data, it has only test score. So it's giving you only on that analysis variable, the variable is test score. Same thing, if you select this proc means or univariate to be done on your data, which is suppose class help or sas help dot class, then it will give you this type of statistical report for every numeric value from your data. In case if you want to select that to be processed in a specific column, so you can also select the columns here by using a var statement. It's same like your proc means like this. Okay, same with univariate also. So instead of PG1 class test, I write sasl.cars and you can select the columns by using var msrp maybe I want and I want suppose number of cylinders. All right, and I submit this proc univariate. So when we submit this proc univariate, it will analyze only on this two numeric columns the result for MSRP and cylinders. All fine? Yes.
to see. We have selected MSRP. So this is the numeric or statistical analysis, including extreme values. And the second numeric variable was number of cylinders. So this is what it gives you the details about its analysis for number of cylinders. So in cylinders column, we do have missing values. So there is upcoming new portion of this report of univariate. How many missing values? Two. The percentage of those missing values. Okay, including your extreme observations, values of observations. At the end, it also tells that cylinder column contains missing values and its statistics of missing values. All fine. So this is how prop univariate helps you to explore your data. Same thing, see, you are working of mileage per gas on highway. So these are the various portions of your prop univariate which gives you the result. Fine. So you can also try this demonstration with univariate for class test as well as for sasl.cars. So try it out. Ashwini? Yes. Uh, in the result that non non missing value like 420 rate, uh -huh. exactly what it is, I, I didn't get it. Okay. It's telling you that this cylinder column contains missing values. Okay. So if you see this help cars, okay. So let's check this column cylinders. Okay, it has values which are numeric that a car has how many cylinders. So within this data of your sasl.cars, it has missing values. So let's move to the next page. So now you know in SAS, the missing values always represent with period, correct? Okay, so it shows that we do have missing values in your data. So it's telling missing values. See the column or the statistics itself is telling the report is missing values. So count of missing values are two. Okay. And it's giving you the percentages. Uh, and where the n is equal to uh, 420, that means there are no missing values. That, does that mean? Uh, n is equal to 420, where? Uh, in this uh, SAS, uh, I think uh, the other means, one. This one. Yeah, yeah, this one, yeah. Okay, okay, one sec. Now look at here. In moments, N is telling. N means it's a statistics to tell you number of non-missing values. So see what oh, it's telling, number of non-missing yeah, values? 26, yeah, and two, two are missing. 26, and two are missing. Oh, okay, got it. Got it? Yeah, thank you. Right. So this was with cylinders. But when we come to the column, which we had selected called MSRP, actually your table contains total 428 rows. So for MSRP, number of non-missing values are 428. Okay. So hence, there is no missing value for it. But in cylinders, yes, because here itself we come to know that there are two values which are missing. Hence, they are giving you the additional statistics on missing values. All right. Yes, got it. Others, Nilima, Shanmuga. Yes, understood. I'm doing it. Okay, great. Anamika, I hope you are able to follow what we are doing. It. I know you are going to just listen for this part. And it's getting clear. So, if you can just try it out with univariate. Let's get introduced to a third procedure called as prop trick. All right. So what is this frequency? It's a procedure where it will calculate the frequency for your table. So frequency is number of or count of the values in your table. 
So let's move ahead. Rock click. I write rock click data equal to pg1 dot. This will take the same thing. So I'm not selecting any tables or columns, sorry. So see how it works with Procfic. So Procfic is a procedure where it will be calculating the values from your columns, how many times it's occurring, that is the counts of the values, the frequency of the values appearing into your data. That is why it's called as frequency. Okay, so when we use this proc frequency default without any column specification. Okay, so let's see how it generates the report. So I get the frequency default on a column name. Then I have column called as subject. I have column called as test code. As you know, we had explored earlier SAS uh, PG1 dot class test two table contains three columns. So irrespective, the column is character. Okay, so see name is a character column, subject is a character column, and test score is a numeric column. Just a second. All right, so see, test score is a numeric column. So what it's trying to tell you, that it's giving you default, these are the statistics, frequency, percentage, cumulative frequency, cumulative percentage. So it's telling you the frequency, that is the value of this name appearing twice, okay? This is the percentage, cumulative frequency for it and cumulative percentage for this value. Then when it comes to the second subject column, the value for maths, it's appearing 19 times, same record uh, for reading also, and it's percent, cumulative frequency, cumulative percentage, and frequency. See, some here, the test score values are showing there is only single value, but 68 is the value of, from the column test score, which appears twice in your data. Then 71 is the test value, which is appearing thrice in your data. So what does this mean? It's the frequency, that is the number of times this value is appearing in your data is 3. It's overall percentage in percentage wise, it's giving you its percentage appearing is 7.8 times cumulative frequency, cumulative percentage. So this is the frequency report of your data where you can see the counts of values appearing. So in case if you want to select the columns for prop rate, so you, are, you know, you have certain tables which has more than 10 columns, 20 columns. So if you do not select the columns, it will give you the frequency count for all the 10 and 20 columns, which is time consuming. It utilizes your resource also. So best way is you can work only on your specific column of analysis by selecting with the table statement here in profit. So what does this tell? Table statement is a statement which requests a frequency to be generated only on the analysis variable which you are using in this list of variables which you are using in your reports. So you write in tables. I want, suppose for only tests, suppose I want subject. Okay, so I can select the columns in table statement as well by giving the space in the column name. So I write subject space. All right, so when I submit this procedure, so only on these two columns, I'll get the frequency count. So on subject, these are the frequencies, and on test mode, this is the frequency count. Fine, so in Procfric, we use table statement to calculate the frequencies of your column. So in Procfric, irrespective your column is character or numeric, it will give you the frequency report. Okay, it's not like means and univariate, where we use VAD statement in univariate and prop means for analysis only on numeric columns. 
but in frequency procedure we use table statement to select the column for analysis irrespective of its type which is character or numeric all right so that's what it's telling by default frequency creates a frequency table for each column in your input table if you do not use table statement but if you want to select any columns we use tables column names separated by space so use to specify the frequency tables to include in results which is table statement so see with sashelp.cars they are using this columns origin is character type is character drive train is character but it's still giving you frequency types okay and thus you have this demonstration so you can open this demonstration p103d01 so let's come to the servers folders select from your pg1 demonstration folder within demonstration it's a lesson number 3 demo 1 so they have given syntax for proclaim proclaim sony array and as per this demonstration read the statements and complete your statement for proclaim go ahead and work on this demonstration please work on it all right yes i'm typing it ashwini okay so the first four procedures are the same which we have seen on our slide so it's just an overview so in second demo first point it's telling complete proc print statement to list the data in your proc print for a data set pg1 dot summary storm summary so let's do it complete this data equal to pg1 dot storm underscore summary table okay then it's telling here print the first ten observations so how we will select the only first ten observations by using this option in proc print of obs equal to 10 right why because again this table is too huge with proc print it will list all the rows so to avoid it we are going to subset or we are going to restrict the rows only till 10 observations into our output data fine then it's telling here highlight the step and run the code add a var statement to include only this columns so let's select only this columns of course in var statement see to it the columns are separated by spaces so we are going to remove all this because i've just copy pasted it So you know your your next your statements can vary multiple lines in program. So this is my var statement which is ending here. Then list ten rows as comment in your proc print. Run the report. So it's telling add list first ten rows as a comment. Okay. So I'm going to write a comment. This is my comment. Within comments, I use this. Fine. Then run the program. It's telling run the step. So let's run this proc print. So you know now you will see the rows or columns with only those columns which you have used in var statement and rows are till ten rows. Then they are asking you to. Create a procedure, which is your procments. Copy your procments step. Copy your proc print and paste it at the end of the program. Change print to means. So let's 
do the same thing. Change it to false. Why? Because we are going to use on the same data, maybe. Hence, they are asking you to use this procedure and change from print to mails. All right. Change print to means, of course, remove this OBS because proc means is not going to support this OBS option. It works only with proc means, proc print, sorry. Analyze all observations, modify your var statement to calculate summary statistics for only numeric column, which they have specified is maximum wind, mile per hour, and minimum pressure. So let's in var statement modify it only with this two numeric columns then add a comment called as calculate summary statistics because we are writing series of program so it should differentiate what are we actually processing hence we are giving this comment Ashwini. Yes. Done? Yeah. So this is how. Others, uh, Shanmuka, Swarupa. I'm doing. Doing? Okay. No problem. You can do it in the same fashion, but how I am doing it. comment examine extreme values then we'll be working with proper Frequency, we are going to select the columns with tables. Okay. Or tables, which are columns which are going to be analyzed and frequency is recent type and season. So we are going to write recent type season. And we are going to change its comment list unique values of frequencies. So this should be your program of this demo. And so this is how your demo program will look like. You see, there are series of programs. So being a data analyst, even if you are working on the same code in future, you should be dis differentiating these codes. Hence, this comments is going to be helpful for you to understand what is the upcoming code or describing your further steps.
So what is the next topic post this demo? It's the practice, okay? So for practice, you can open your PDF book. So within this PDF book, you can click this icon on your left side, this ribbon, and come to lesson three. Lesson three, we have seen exploring, we had seen demo, so come to practice. The practice is what we are going to see the exercise. So this is level one exercise. It's asking you to explore data with procedures. So this is the same thing what we had seen with demonstration, okay? Then you have level two, then you have challenge, all right? So same thing you can check here. So it's telling here exploring data and procedures. So let's work on this exercise, okay? So Shanmuga, have you done? I'm done, I'm done. Okay, any errors which you are facing in that code? No, no. No, okay. So come to this page 3-14 in your PDF book, which okay. is the exercise level one, exploring data with procedures. So let's explore your data by using our same procedures which we have learned print means univariate on a table called np underscore summary which is in your library pg1 so this np summary is a table which is national park summary data okay so for that they're telling open this code which is p103 p01 which is ready to use code for your exercise so moving back we have practice folder Within practices folder, we have, see, P103, P01, which is practice one. So the same is given here. So go ahead and read here. So it's telling complete your prop print statement to list first 20 rows from this NP underscore summary. It's just to explore your data. What are the columns? So we write PG one underscore sorry dot np underscore summary this is the tape and it is asking you to limit the rows obvious equal to how many rows 20 observations so 20 now when i execute this proc print you know it will give you the list output for all the columns, but the rows will be only restricted to 20. So see the columns. All right. Now, what are they telling on your PDF? Add a var statement to include only the following variables. Region type, park name, day visit, tent camps, campers, and RV campers. So let's analyze the data for listing the report only on the selected columns by using var. So the columns name should not be having or should not be separated with commas. Statement of var should end with semicolon. No keyword like add. Remove it. The tie a uh, whole uh, comma okay and then what are they telling do you observe any possible inconsistencies in the data so what inconsistencies you see in name type copy uh, in park name visit type tent campers and rv campers so let's execute so I'm executing my prop print. I'm getting the output. So look at the type column. So some of the type of the park names is showing with its only two letters, whereas some values are the whole values like preserve. Okay, so this is something inconsistency in the column type. Fine. Then it's telling, see, what are we doing is we are exploring our data. 
So with exploring, we find that everywhere the value type is not same. The preserve is also sometimes represented as PRE and here it's showing you the whole world. Are you getting it? This is what we are actually understanding our data or exploring our data. I hope you are understanding what we are discussing here. Everyone, I hope you're looking at my screen yes. also. Yes. Yes. So first yes. understand this and then you can work later on. Okay. Then they are asking in your PDV, either you follow PDF or they have also given some steps here. So I read any which one. Then it's telling highlight the step and run the selected code. So we know there is some inconsistency in data for column type. Then they're asking you to generate a report on promptness. So for that, because the procedures and all the things are common, let's copy it. And instead of print, we use means. The data is going to be the same. In means, this option is not valid, so we remove it. Then they are telling the OB is equal to data set option. Okay, it's remove. Modify your var statement with numeric columns. Why numeric columns? Because it's a means procedure and means procedure works only on numeric columns. So these are the numeric columns. See, day visits, 10 campers, we camp, are we campers? So I'm going to let me select this. So as per this rock means, it should have day visits. visit and this okay highlight the code and run the program what is the minimum value for 10 campers is that value unexpected let's execute so i'm running this proc means so you know in proc means we get mean value standard deviation value minimum and maximum values of that column okay so as per this scenario we are going to check this values So what is the question? Unexpected. What unexpected they are telling? Unusual. So highlight the step run. What is the minimum value of 10 campers? Is that value unexpected? So if you see, it's the same report. Minimum value is zero. How can we have zero values of your 10 campers? Okay. Because we know in SAS, if we do not have any values or if there are no in this data, if there are no any visitors who are using this 10 campers in SAS, we know the missing value should be represented with period, correct? But here yes. it shows you zero. So as per our understanding to validate or explore your data, it should be missing and no zero. Why? Because numeric values in SAS always represent with missing. So in SAS, we never have zero value, okay? If there is no value, that means it's missing. Missing for numeric column, it's period. For character, it's blank. Okay, moving ahead now, let's work with proc univariate. So let's copy this means and use it with proc univariate. With univariate, copy means, Step and paste it at the end of this. Change this, we know. Highlight the data and run. Are there negative values for any of the columns? So let's change this to. All right. So let's work on. Analysis variable for day visits, 10 campers, and RV campers because again, univariate is similar like your prop means, which executes only on or processes only numeric columns for generating the summary statistics report. I have a network issue, here. that's why I'm getting this. So it's telling, do we have anywhere? negative values. 
So ideally in any of the data, we should not have negative values, okay? String values do we have for this column? And this is for RV campers. String values, make sure we do not have any negative values. Are these negative values for any columns? No. Copy your univariate and change it to frequency. Instead of where now you know in frequency it supports table and we are going to select the frequency count for region and type. So let's move ahead. And generate a report on means. Sorry, prompt frame. So with where, where never works. See, it's not highlighted in view in prompt frame. So there itself we should understand that is not a valid option or statement in profit. So in profit, we want on the region and type the frequency report. So let's submit prop frequency to check the frequency values for region. So see the region values and see the type values. So see this type, see this values. See now, there are various ways they have given that types are appearing, though it's the same. So it's non-preserved, non-preserved, okay? And see how it is coming in different way. Then preserve is coming in this way, two ways. Again, reverb ways is coming in two ways. All right, so this is how these are invalid data values. Fine? So are there any low case values or codes are there any codes that occur only once in table? So when you see this frequency, once it is appearing, that means it's invalid data, invalid. Okay, so it's again not going to be a valid way of representing. Add comments before each step to document the program, save the program as this. So this is how they're simply trying to give you a glimpse as a practice session that how one can work on this particular business scenarios in your PDB. So later on when you're practicing, you can write comments for every program, which we had done earlier, like your demonstration. And if you want, you can save this code also with the name as an independent name. Why? Because don't save it as it is, else it will overwrite your practice. Okay, so save with this name, which they have provided. NP underscore validate. Dot, dot SS will be by default extension. All right. So level two and challenge, I can give you as your self-study, fine. So post practice, we have the next topic, which is filtering, but we'll take it in our next class. So meanwhile, any doubts, any questions? No. No? Are we good? Yes. Do you find it's a bit Interesting so now. We, once we save the uh, this uh, file as the name they provide, it goes on the libraries which part. So see, when you are going to save it, let me give you. See, it will actually, you save it in your path, okay? So in case if I give this save, save as it should. Save as. See, it's asking you where to save. So select your files. Within it, selecting PG1. And simply in PG1, save it like this. All right. As you saved your lib name, you can simply write instead of this name, you give np underscore maybe explore 
dot ss is its default extension and the see it. Where shall we save that? Simply select your files folder and save. So by default, it gets saved like your library. In, in practice folder or? No, no, don't save in any folder. Simply select files. And okay. it will be saved in the same path. Like okay. your lib name, have you have saved? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. See NP Explorer. So it's simply in the files. I just selected files. Okay. All right. Yeah. So this next exercise I give to you as self-study, level two, level three, which is challenge, okay? We are okay to stop now. Any doubts, any questions, either you can, we can discuss it in our next session or whenever you want, you can always ping me and we can see to it how we can discuss there or we can discuss before uh, your class, which is five minutes before, or post your class, five, ten minutes post your class. All right. So let's stop for the day. Wish you good night. Take care. And see you on Tuesday. Bye. Okay. Thank you for that. Thanks. Yes. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.